Today, Intel talks Battle Mage. Core Ultra desktop CPUs get a release date, Ryzen 9000 X3D also gets one, and AMD just announced an update that makes Ryzen faster. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, Intel recently had a discussion that they uploaded on YouTube that talks about their next gen desktop GPUs codenamed Battle Mage. Now it can get a little bit confusing, but just remember that Battle Mage is the codename for Intel's next gen discrete desktop gaming GPUs, but then the architecture that those are built from is codenamed XE2. And while they didn't go over too many details, they actually did give us a little bit of performance numbers. But before I I get to that, I wanted to really quickly go over what the rep said. And as you can see right here, he said it's a scalable architecture. So this XE2 architecture is obviously the basis of our graphics for Lunar Lake, which is integrated, but it is also going into our Battle Mage next generation discrete graphics. So Battle Mage is going to be a larger, bigger configuration with faster memory subsystems and bigger caches and all the rest of it, and maybe even different clocks and different power envelopes. But the fundamental building block that XE2 core is going to be the same, specifically going to be the same as it is in Lunar Lake, not the same XE1 core that's in the Alchemist lineup. Either way, they actually shared a couple slides here. And first up, this one right here is specifically for the IP performance improvements with XE2. And as you can see, so this is relative performance normalized to configuration and clock frequency. Now, this may not mean a whole lot to the average person, but this is the type of stuff that goes into making it faster and things like games, but this is specifically going to be your IP performance. So trace rays, your ray triangles, your vertex index cut, the mesh shader dispatch, but as you can see, there are some pretty big boosts here. We're talking with Compute Dispatch 11, 7x increase. Then we have Mesh Shader Dispatch 4.1 times. Then we have Vertex Processing 1.5 times. So these are definitely some really big boosts of a Rexy one. But when it comes to more specific kind of performance that we can expect, as you can see right here, they do a comparison. And I believe I've actually shown this slide when they announced Lunar Lake, but this does give you an idea of what kind of performance you can expect. As you can see on average, we're looking at and actually how they stated it. It seemed more like this was almost like a base thing to expect, but 1.5 times performance versus previous gen. And you can see that we're looking at performance versus power, and it's significantly faster across the entire power envelope. And of course, this is Lunar Lake, so this is going to be more of your lower power mobile SOCs. So obviously, they're going to be able to give significantly more power to the uh, discrete desktop variants. So we could see even a higher boost than 1.5 times, though obviously they have a lot of performance they need to make up before they get anywhere near the high end of even this generation's GPUs much less next gen. So I definitely don't think 1.5x is really going to be enough to get them there. But at the same time, even if they're able to offer a very good price or performance more in the mid to low range, that still may be worth it. With all of that said, this is still a very nice performance boost. And when I want a boost in my computer knowledge, there's only one place I trust to learn what I need to, and that's with today's sponsor. Brilliant, because let's be honest, computer science can get pretty complex, but brilliant is where you learn by doing, which has been proven time and time again to be the best way to learn. So instead of listening to some boring lecture, brilliant makes you interact with what they're teaching you. That way you can see how it works and actively participate in it. And they have thousands of these interactive courses from programming to AI with their new course on large language models. There really is no better place to learn. And when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld or use the QR code on screen, you can actually try out Brilliant for 30 days free. So there's really no reason not to try. Plus, when you use my link, you'll get 20% off your annual premium. Once again, visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld for 20% off and a free trial. 
And next up for today, I recently went over some of the first benchmarks for Intel's next generation Core Ultra 200 desktop CPUs. And if you saw that video, you know that Intel's highest end model, the Core Ultra 9 285K, actually beat out the 9950X and Geekbench 6. Well, it looks like we now not only have the announcement date, but even the release date for those Intel CPUs. If you remember, not too long ago, Intel actually canceled their big innovation of Event. This was one of multiple ways that they were trying to cut costs just because they had, well, a pretty bad quarter recently. Either way, according to some leaks that we've been seeing, Air Lake apparently will still be shown off on October 10th, i.e. this is going to be the announcement. And then most recently, you can see right here, following the disclosure of the 1010 announcement, the new series will apparently be said to be arriving a week later. This one comes from board channels, and as you can see, it says, quote, it is confirmed that Intel's new generation motherboard platform Z890 series, as well as the new products, will be officially launched on October 17. Basically, it's looking like Intel's next generation CPUs could be coming even less than two months from now. I mean, we're talking just a few weeks from now. So if you were thinking about possibly buying a Ryzen 9000 CPU, you may want to hold off to at least see what Intel has to offer. Offer. And of course, from what we've been seeing, it does look like they're offering quite a bit. But of course, with all things like this, time, as always, will tell. And next up, if you were thinking about possibly just waiting it out for AMD's next-gen Ryzen 9000 X3D chips, well, I actually have some bad news. If you remember just recently on ASUS's little kind of like micro site where they were announcing and discussing their X870E and X870 motherboards, we actually saw that they had included X3D, specifically Ryzen 9000 X3D, in multiple calls to it. You can see this one right here is an image, so it's calling this image on this other URL, and you can see within the URL, 9000 X3D. So this obviously made us think that, hey, these are clearly coming and coming soon. And of course, all the leaks and rumors had actually pointed to that, but... Unfortunately, that does not look to be the case. As you can see right here, this is from the well-known leaker HXL, and it says Ryzen 9000 X3D CES 2025. Now, that is early 2025. CES is in early January, but still, that's quite a bit later than what we originally thought. And as you can see, one Usmus who is the person who made the DRAM calculator for Ryzen. So if anyone does understand some of the internal workings of AMD, it would be him. He specifically said yes. And then we have Hassan from WCCF Tech. He also said, unfortunately, yes. Basically, they're almost certainly hearing this from board partners and different contacts that they have within AMD. And from what multiple people are hearing, AMD's next gen 9000 XRD chips aren't coming until next year. And lastly for today, we've got some great news for pretty much anyone who owns AMD's recent Ryzen CPUs. Specifically, we're talking Ryzen 9000, 7000, and even 5000. As you can see right here, this is a post from AMD, a blog post, and it's titled Ryzen 9000 Series Community Update gaming performance. And of course, if you've been following the reviews of Andy's Ryzen 9000 CPUs, this really shouldn't surprise you. Simply put, it's been a pretty big disappointment. We're talking in gaming performance, actually in quite a bit of different performance subsets, but specifically gaming performance was a big one. And not too long after the release, I believe it was Hardware Unboxed who originally found the reason why gaming performance from reviewers was a little bit worse than the performance that was shown by AMD in the reviewer's guide. For those who may not know, when AMD sends out review units, they also send a reviewer's guide. And in that guide, they basically show you what kind of performance you should expect from your CPU. So if it's massively different, you can kind of figure out what's going on because there is likely some kind of issue. And for whatever reason, that was giving them more performance. Well, this is now their response to that. And obviously, as I had said when I originally discussed this, you do not want to put your PC in admin mode. Well, AMD now has an answer. As you can see right here, so really quickly I'm going to discuss, they're kind of giving some reasons why reviewers 
might have a little bit of a different performance than AMD's. They say AMD's game testing suite includes a broad set of esports, AAA, and popular older games, which are a combination of CPU and GPU bound titles. Game performance conclusions can be influenced significantly by the makeup of the test suite. Though, obviously, in this case, we're talking comparing the exact same game to the exact same game. So I mean, that doesn't really apply there. Then they say AMD tested Intel configurations using comparable DDR5-6000 memory, as well as Intel default settings baseline power profile, which can have a small impact on gaming performance. Now, I will say that most reviewers use DDR5-6000, so that shouldn't be an issue. Then they said AMD also tests with Windows virtualization-based security enabled. Now, from what I've talked to with AMD, that really shouldn't make much of a difference there at all either. So that seems like a non-issue as well, but then we get to this. It says the Zen 5 architecture incorporates a wider branch prediction capability than prior Zen generations. Our automated test methodology was run in admin mode, which produced results that reflect branch prediction code optimizations not present in the version of Windows reviewers used to test Ryzen 9000. So there you have it, AMD was running in admin mode, which actually gave branch prediction code optimizations that aren't in the regular Windows 11. Well, the great news here is that you can see here, it says four Zen 5 users. Here are our recommendations for how to unlock the best performance. Optimized AMD specific branch prediction code will be available in Windows 11 version 24H2 in preview through the Windows Insider program. Release preview channel build, it gives all that right there. Or you can download the ISO here. It then says while performance will vary based on the application and configurations, below is a sample of what you can expect. And as you can see right here, these are just a few things. You can see Far Cry 6 plus 13%, Cyberpunk 2077 plus 7%, Hitman 3, not much of a difference, then no change in Watch Dogs Legion, Cinebench 2024 single thread, no change. So there are a few things that actually get a fairly decent boost. And get this, it actually gets even better. While they do say that, you can see it says the Zen 5 architecture incorporates a wider branch prediction capacity than prior Zen generations, and because of that, Zen 5 should get the most performance, but in fact, as you can see, it says Zen 5 will see the biggest boost, but this Windows update will improve performance for Zen 4 and Zen 3 as well. Basically, even older generations are set to get a boost in performance with this update. So while that does it for today, are you pumped to get some free performance on your Ryzen CPU? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day.